Microsoft Designer is now available in public preview, but how does it stack up to Canva? Today, I take a look at Microsoft's new design app and have a look at the AI functionality that's built into it. So Microsoft really is on a roll at the moment, releasing new applications. A few weeks ago, we had its Loop application, which we saw in public preview for the first time, really a copy of Notion. Then we had also the preview of the new Teams client which you can use now. And today Microsoft is making available in a public preview its designer app. Now, what is this exactly? If you're familiar with Canva, that's probably the best way to think of designer. Now, Canva is really an application for people who are not designers, but need to produce content for maybe social media, things like Facebook, Instagram, but lots of other things too, maybe some kind of presentation or to lay out an ebook. All of those design things that are quite common in today's world of business as content really is very important. But of course, we, we don't necessarily have the design skills to be able to do those things. Now, Canva is really a drag and drop application based on a series of templates that you can use in the browser. And what's really great about Canva, I think, and one of the reasons that I use it is all of the templates that are there and all of the clip art and photographs and kind of stock items that you can just drag and drop into your design. So I don't need to go and look somewhere else to find all of that material. And that's what Microsoft is offering here with Designer. So I'm going to quickly switch over to my desktop and let's just have a look to see what we're getting here. So this is what you get presented with when you open Designer for the first time. Now, the first difference with Canva here is that you're basically prompted to describe in natural language what it is that you want to create. Now, you do have the option just to switch directly to a blank canvas and start dragging and dropping, uh, you know, uh, different things onto the canvas, or you can select a template, of course. But let's give this a go and see what it comes up with. So I want to create a thumbnail for this YouTube video. So I'm going to say, create a thumbnail for a YouTube video uh, about Microsoft Designer. And let's see what it comes up with. So that's just going to take a few seconds to generate some ideas. And there we go. Well, the first thing about this, of course, is that well, uh, it clearly doesn't know the dimensions for a YouTube thumbnail. And that's a little bit uh, disappointing. So, of course, I can change the size here. And basically, you can just choose between portrait, landscape and square. And while a YouTube thumbnail is landscape, it's not these exact dimensions, but that's as close as I'm going to get. So let's just let it regenerate those ideas. See if it comes up with anything better. Well, you know, you can see that this feature is really kind of lifted from the designer feature in PowerPoint. This kind of looks like what I would expect that to produce. And I suppose, well, it's not bad, but these are not really, you know, something that I would consider for a YouTube thumbnail. But maybe it's a good starting point. I don't know. But it's interesting anyway. So I can just select one of these. I don't know which one is most you know likely to be something that I could use. I don't know, let's just select this one. And of course now I can go into the main application and I can select you know different ideas here. I mean again if you're familiar with the designer feature in PowerPoint this is very very similar to that. Uh, I've got a series of templates that I can choose from here. Again it all looks very PowerPoint-esque if you ask me. And I can choose from various different things that I can add to this. So I could choose something here, this graphic, and it will just put it directly onto the canvas. And then, of course, I can move it around, position it, do whatever I want with it. Uh, and you've got various controls here. You know, if I want to make it transparent, then I got the controls there to do it, to set it as the background. And Microsoft says they're going to add lots of AI functionality. You know, Canva has some of that stuff as well. For instance, 
you know, if I've got a, a background picture, but it's not quite big enough, it will automatically extend it for me, uh, remove foreground objects from the background, all that kind of stuff that I use Canva for on a regular basis. Imagine I wanted to put a picture of myself onto this thumbnail and I have a picture, but I just want to remove the background and make it into a transparent PNG or GIF. All of that functionality will be built into designers. You don't have to go to another application to do that. Now, this is very similar to Canva, if you're familiar with that. Uh, so I can choose from, you know, photos, graphics, videos, I can search. And, you know, I think this is really where Microsoft has the potential to win here. Because while Canva is free to use, if I want to add any kind of elements like a graphic, some of them are free, but the ones that are actually worth using, you have to pay extra for. So, of course, I don't know how Microsoft is going to license designer going forwards. Hopefully all of this stuff will be free if you're paying for some kind of subscription. You don't have to pay something extra, I hope. But of course, I could turn this into a YouTube thumbnail. It just gives me a starting point. But I would hope in the future that that AI technology will really understand, at the very least, the correct dimensions for a YouTube thumbnail and then understand, well, what are the design best practices for a YouTube thumbnail. So of course it should be bright colors, it should be eye-catching, there should be no more than two or three design elements on it and we'll see how all of that goes. Now this is all very simple at the moment. All of those advanced things that you get in Canva are not here at the moment but they are coming. You know Microsoft has given a list of things that are kind of you know already in Canva that it hopes to add over the coming months and of course this is just in preview at this stage and you've got all this kind of brand kit stuff where you can select fonts and colors to make it easy to create content that's consistent with your brand style. So you know this is pretty much what we expected it to be pretty much a copy of Canva uh, you know, it's interesting that AI stuff, I really think that needs to be developed to make it something useful. Uh, but it's really interesting that it offers that as the first step. And yeah, why not? It's a great idea just to, you know, tell it directly. What is it that you want to do and see what it comes up with rather than you having to kind of go and search for a series of templates or the elements and try and put something together yourself. So really interesting. You can go and try this out at designer.microsoft.com right now and let me know what you think about it in the comments. So if you remember a few weeks ago, we announced Windows Lap is now built into Windows 10 and Windows 11, providing, of course, that you have the latest updates. Now, as part of that announcement, Microsoft said that soon it was going to enable something called cloud laps, if you like. So this is a different system where instead of storing the local administrator passwords in Windows Server Active Directory, which is, which is of course your on-premise domain controllers, it would be able to store those passwords in Azure Active Directory if you have a device that's joined to Azure AD, of course, and do all of that cool stuff like automatically rotate those local admin passwords, all of the features that you get now with Windows Server Active Directory. So so this week, Microsoft announced that that feature is now available in preview. So there are a couple of caveats, if you like, to it. So first of all, you have to have the latest cumulative updates for Windows 10 and Windows 11, and all of that Windows lapse goodness is now built into the operating system. So you don't have to you know, go and install the client like you had to in the past. Another caveat is that you need to have a Microsoft Intune license because all of this is configured via Microsoft Intune. This only works with Azure AD joined devices. So if you have devices that are just registered with Azure AD, regardless of whether it's Windows or whether it's Linux, this is not currently a supported scenario. You need to have Windows devices that are joined to Azure Active Directory. And of course, it goes without saying this is a public preview, so it's something you should just be testing, not rolling out to all of your production devices at this stage. But I think this is pretty exciting stuff. While we're on the subject of Azure, I just wanted to mention in passing that the hot patch functionality, which is a feature of Windows Server Azure Edition, is now being extended to 
servers that have the desktop experience installed. So currently it's only officially supported if you have like a server core installation. But now in preview, Microsoft are trying this functionality with the desktop experience installed as well. So if you're not familiar with the Azure edition of Windows Server, this is if you have Windows Server installed in a virtual machine running on Azure, or if you have Windows Server running in a VM in Azure, is it HCI stack or stack HCI? They're always swapping these things around, but basically that kind of on-premises box where you have Azure running in a box and you have all of that Azure cloud goodness, but in your own data center. So it's also supported there as well. Another thing that I wanted to quickly mention this week is that the phone link application with support for iOS is now gradually rolling out to Windows 11 users. I try to uh, have a look at this today on my PC, but unfortunately version of the application and I couldn't force an update. So you can see it's still grayed out here. It says coming soon, but I hope to get this in the next couple of weeks and really have a go and see how this works. Now, as far as I know, the features in this are pretty simple at the moment. I think it just supports maybe SMS messaging and maybe some basic file transfer stuff. I'm, I'm not really sure I need to check the details, but uh, I really want to try this because Intel, and I forgot the name of it actually, Intel, uh, Intel Unison, yep. So Intel Unison, also have an application for iOS, which does the same kind of thing basically. And to be honest, it's been pretty disappointing. I set it up, it worked for a couple of weeks and then randomly it just stopped working for whatever reason, the connection between the application and the phone was lost. And to be honest, if I'm gonna have these kind of problems with it, you've already lost me. I want to transfer a file, the link is broken. I tried to reestablish it. It said that everything was working. I still couldn't transfer a file is like, well, if this is going to be so difficult, you know, I'll find some other way to get that file onto my device. So I hope that phone link from Microsoft is going to be a more reliable solution. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Maybe I'll do a demo of that as soon as it becomes publicly available. The last thing that I wanted to talk about this week is cloud.microsoft. So the cloud.microsoft domain. Now, this is a new thing that Microsoft is gradually rolling out, first of all, to new applications that come into Microsoft 365. And then as time goes by, it's going to gradually roll this out to existing features and applications. Now, the idea of this is to get everything working on a single like subdomain of, of Microsoft. You know, Microsoft.com is not going in the way, but at the moment you have things like teams.microsoft.com, as we just saw earlier, uh, designer.microsoft.com. And the disadvantage of this is that every time you switch application, Microsoft needs to re-authenticate you. Now, in general, that happens automatically, but the problem with it is, is that it takes time. So now every time you open up a new app with a new subdomain, you have to basically wait a few seconds while it performs all of that authentication to make sure you really are who you say you are. Now, the idea of bringing everything at some point onto a single subdomain is that it won't have to constantly re-authenticate you as you switch applications. And I think, you know, this is really you know, a great development because it is a bit clunky you know, even if you're in Teams, that's, for instance, lots of different applications that you might be switching to in a Teams channel. If you've had a tab for, for OneNote, for lists and all these different things, you know, despite the fact that you're in Teams, you're actually switching between all of these different applications and that authentication between them as it stands today takes time. So, you know, and I think this is going to take probably years for Microsoft to get all of these apps into a single subdomain, but definitely this is something think that, you know, I welcome and it's going to really make a difference for the speed of, you know, or the perceived, you know, uh, responsiveness of these applications, uh, especially for something like Teams, uh, which is going to be really great. So if you found the information in today's video useful, please give it a like. I'd really appreciate that. I'm going to leave a video on the screen now that you might also find interesting about Microsoft Loop. But that's it from me today and I'll see you next time.